Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know, I, I think we have a good show, but the best show is what's going on behind the scenes here. You just don't know. If only I could show it to you. But I can't. We're giving Dean a very hard time around here. That's all I'm going to say. And pretty soon, Dean's going to be giving people an even harder time. From what I hear. That's right. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, thank you for being part of our program. We appreciate it. And uh, I am looking at a... Uh, I'm going to call it from some website called BeliefNet. And I want to say, uh, first of all, that um, I detest this site uh, because they spam the crap out of me. They send me unsolicited material all the time, and I detest them. And I would ask that you not go to their website. Because anybody who's going to spam me to that extent and uh, jam up my mailbox does not deserve to be promoted or, or whatever. But I, I'm giving them credit merely because I'm using their material on the air. But I do believe that uh, when a website asks you to sign up for it, uh, they owe it to you to write to you and ask you if you want to opt in to be spammed. And BeliefNet does not do that. They just simply start spamming away. As does the San Diego Union Tribune website, uh, which is called signonsandiego.com. They don't bother to ask if you're interested in spam. They just start sending it. They get flooded. There's a bunch of these out there. I'll be highlighting some of those in the near future. These websites that jam our mailbox with spam uh, without our request, without our consent. They just start sending it. And uh, BeliefNet is one of those. How hard would it be for these websites uh, when they... Uh, when they want to send you spam, how hard would it be to send you an email and ask if you'd like to receive it? Or how many times uh, do friends of yours who don't have their own email address, or maybe they do, they get to a website to go shopping or something and they need an email address so they use yours instead of theirs? And then the website, rather than verifying that it's you, just starts spamming away? Yeah. So uh, BeliefNet is one of these. They don't care if you want to opt in or not. They're sending you spam. It just doesn't stop. But despite the fact that I detest them for their spam policy, uh, I will give them the proper creditation for uh, using their material here and uh, urge them to change the policy and start uh, asking people if they want the crap that they send out. All right, this is from some uh, columnist who writes an ethics column for BeliefNet named uh, Joseph Telushkin. And the uh, name of this particular edition of his column is Are Men More Shallow Than Women? And it goes like this. Joseph, again, is the name of the uh, columnist. It goes like this. Dear Joseph... In responding to a woman whose husband was mean to her because she was overweight, you wrote that, quote, One of the unfair aspects is that women tend to be more tolerant of physical imperfections in men than men are of physical imperfections in women. It seems to me that there is a big implication to what you were saying, that women by not judging men by their looks, the way men judge women, are deeper and morally superior to men. I don't have the sense that you're a big feminist, so what do you say to that? Here is Joseph Telushkin's response. He says, if this were the only issue distinguishing men and women, then you'd be right. Greater female openness to men who are not physically attractive would show women to be emotionally and morally deeper than men. The problem is, he says, that while women are more tolerant than men in the area of looks, women tend, like men, to have their own areas of shallowness, specifically 
money and professional success. Thus, if you were trying to fix up a man with a woman and told him she's gorgeous, bright, and very kind, but she's not that motivated professionally, I don't think she'll ever be a big earner. Most men I know would think, if she's gorgeous, bright, and very kind, I really want to meet her. I can make peace with the fact that she won't bring home a fat paycheck. On the other hand, if you told most, though obviously not all, women, there's a guy to whom I want to introduce you. He's really good-looking, bright, and kind, but not all that successful professionally. I suspect that a far higher percentage of middle-class women, the group I know best, would think, well, it's very nice that he's so good-looking, bright, and kind, but this lack of ambition and low earning ability sounds worrisome. I think I'll pass on this one. A number of women to whom I've outlined this scenario acknowledge that what I've written is pretty much true, but insist that such reasoning does not reflect badly on their sex. As one friend put it, when a woman looks at a man, she's thinking of building a family with him. She wants to know that he'll be motivated to support her and their children. There's nothing shallow about that. Security is a more serious consideration than looks. Perhaps, says the columnist, Joseph Tolucian, but I'm only saying that your argument doesn't convince me that women are morally superior to men. In fact, I've long suspected that for many women, money plays the role that looks play for men, enough certainly to earn one a first date and maybe more. That's when we. That's why when we hear of an older man married to a much younger woman, we generally assume that he's rich and she's pretty. On the other hand, whether it's fair or unfair, when people hear of a young man with a much older woman, they often assume he has a need for a mother figure. When was the last time you saw a 30-year-old woman on the arm of a man living off his Social Security check? That's true. In truth, it's a bad idea to turn this into a who's better issue, because life is more complex than that. The attraction of many women to wealth, and there are no shortage of men who are attracted to wealth as well, in part is motivated by a desire to have a safe environment for their future family, and by their attraction to the ambitiousness and vitality of a man who's made himself rich. Obviously, this would not necessarily follow if the man's wealth was inherited. Still, what about the tremendous emphasis that many men put on women's looks? What does that say about them? Joseph says, I see it as largely, though not exclusively, due to males possessing a sexual organ that responds involuntarily. In contrast, many women, when they meet a man to whom they are not initially attracted, find that it has become increasingly friendly. The man often becomes more physically attracted to them. It goes on. Here's the bottom line here. He's right. Men and women have their own areas of, I don't want to say shallowness, because um, I think we're hardwired this way. I have always said on this program, I've said it this way, I have said that uh, men want the hottest woman their money can attract. Women want the richest man their looks can attract. So men want the hottest chick they can afford, and women want the richest guy they can attract. That's essentially what it is. And um, I don't see one as being more shallow than the other. I don't think men are more shallow than women because we care about your looks. Uh, by the way, if you want to get biological about this and say, well, women are concerned about security and raising the family, and that's a very important concern, the reason men are concerned about looks is so we can be sexually motivated to impregnate you, if you want to get down to the biological end of this. If we have to look at you naked and you look awful, it's highly unlikely we're going to impregnate you. Do you understand? We need you to be hot and young and, and nubile. We need that to be inspired to nail you. We've said on this program many times, Viagra and Cialis would not be necessary if guys would just hang out with hot young chicks. That's right. Don't bury your head in there, Dean. It's true. It's absolutely true. Anybody who's seen Mike Ditka promoting Cialis or uh, Bob Dole promoting Viagra, Look at their wives, and you see why they need drugs to perform. 
All they need is hot young chicks. They wouldn't need pills. Why fight the biological reality that men will always be attracted to women in their teens and 20s? No matter how old we get, that's what we want. It is not an accident in movies that the leading men get older, but the women stay the same age. It's not an accident. Because in real life, that's our fantasy. Some of us aren't wealthy enough or successful enough to pull that off. But those of us who are, that's what we do. We like them younger and hotter. Right, Dean? Younger and hotter. That's what we like. I mean, older women, fat women, ugly women, poor women. These are for poor guys. Guys who can't afford to get the best. <laughs> that's, that's who they're for. I mean, there's, yes, I agree. There's someone for everyone. Fat chicks are for poor guys. Old chicks are for poor guys. Homely chicks are for poor guys. They may have great personalities and wonderful souls. But guys who can afford the best get the best. That's how it works. It's a quid pro quo. Does that make men shallower than women? 1-800-5800-TOM Hey, I just wanted to know where I need to send the check. For what? For the service that you're giving out. Uh, it's uh, free to the public. I'm the Mother Teresa of Broadcasting, as you know. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. He's our telephone number, Bugsy, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, Tom. Yes. Long time, long time. How you doing? Doing okay, Bugsy. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, one of the things you were talking about, definitely valid, man, because look at you, Hafner. Well, he's 78. He doesn't use Viagra. He's a prime example. Well, actually, he says he does use Viagra. Really? Yeah, he does, yeah. but he is 78. I mean... <laughs> 78, yeah, but I mean, that was just recently, in the last, what... A couple of years. That's true. That. That's true. Yeah, so, I mean, but look, I mean, for God's sake, the guy's got, you know, I mean, the twins, and then he's got that. He's, it's, a, it's a trio. Um, <laughs> yeah, got, they've been on our show. Really? When was that? We did our show from the Playboy Mansion a few months ago. No kidding. What is that place like? I've heard so many amazing things about that. Friends of mine that have been there, there are promoters out here in Phoenix mm -hmm. that have been, uh, gotten invited to parties out there. Um we do our show there uh, at least twice a year. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing, Tom. Hey, how, you've been doing this for what, like 20, what, 30? How many years have you been doing well, I've been doing this show for 12 years. In fact, it's 12 years next month. Okay. And yeah. I've been doing um, talk radio for 26 years. And so, by the way, did the uh, results for the ratings come in? You said that... Yes. How how did it go for Phoenix? It went really well. <laughs> That's great, man. I mean, we love you out here. I mean, I, I will say that I don't. There's some strong issues I won't talk about right now, just because Dean in the past has told me right. there's a time and a place to talk about certain issues. Um, you know, some of the things that you talk about abortion, different things. I don't always agree with certain issues that are close to the heart, just because I've had uh, I had a girl that aborted a baby behind my back and. We we're planning on having the baby. It was four months into it, and you know, there's been some hard things. But a lot of what you say is very valid. Um, I mean, you just you you're you're real rough around the edges, and you're real blunt, and people don't like the way you say it because you just spit it so. It's kind of like a dagger, man. You just it pierces people, and you know, it does cause a lot of uproar. I was talking with my friend earlier today, and I was like, "Damn, Tom is straight." He's breaking couples up, he's shaking things up, and he's basically just putting people to, I mean, <laughs> to the test of yeah. truth of just like, you know, you're either living or you're dying in your relationships, and in right. the meantime, really question yourself, why are you in that relationship? What is your motive? That's right. What's it all about, you know? <laughs> well, that, that's what we're here to do, is to make people question uh, what they've been doing. 
In many cases, they need to change what they're doing, for God's sake. Hey, thank you, Bugsy. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thomas on the Tom Liga Show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. Um, it's, I've been li listening to you uh, for a while, but uh, I think I've got a slightly different perspective, uh, maybe, than what you're used to. Uh, I live in Los Angeles right now, and I think a lot of the advice that you give is actually uh, more uh, applicable to uh, the coast as opposed to the center of the country. Well, why do you say that? Have you traveled the entire West Coast and stayed in every city? Uh, i tell you what, I actually live in Los Angeles right now, uh, lived in Portland, Oregon for three years, and uh, lived in the uh, Texas and... Well, how can you love Los Angeles and Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat, together? Uh, they're definitely not, but they're both on well, the Well, you just coast. lumped everything on the West Coast together. Uh, well, no, they're, they're, they're absolutely very different. Um, but I, We're not talking about uh, geographic areas. We're talking about hot chicks versus not so hot chicks well, I, I think and there are more hot chicks in areas where there are guys with money no no I, they I naturally I, gravitate believe me i know having spent uh, three years in oregon but i think the bigger distinction is uh... texas versus uh... los angeles you've got what uh, you think there's no gold diggers in texas no there's not but i think in you, you, you said what no there's not there's no gold diggers in texas no, no, no. There are gold diggers in Texas. So what's the difference between Texas and Los Angeles? I think the difference is you've got a much lower cost of living in Texas than you do in Los Angeles. So if you are... People also make lower salaries on average than they do in Los Angeles. Right, but I think uh, making 23, uh, or not 23, uh, 43, 45, $47,000 straight out of college, you can actually meet a woman and live a lifestyle that you would want in Texas versus California. Pal, you can certainly meet hot chicks in California and score them, and you don't have to be a millionaire to do it. That's what we talk about on this show all the time. Right. So Now, now Texas, it, Texas is pretty much neck and neck with Los Angeles, specifically Dallas. In terms of hot chicks. Which is where I grew up, actually. All right. Well, we've spent a lot of time in Dallas, and we'll be spending a lot more time in Dallas. And uh, there's hot chicks, there's gold diggers, but I certainly don't agree with you that you're more likely to get a hot chick with less money in Texas than you are in Los Angeles. Well, I, I mean, that, that was my only point. I think, you've get a, I think you've got a less probability of gold diggers in uh, Dallas and Why would you there. say that? Uh, just because of the cost of living differential. But the, 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 even, it doesn't matter what the cost of living is. Everything is scaled out according to where you live. Um, I mean, there are gold digging girls in Mexico City uh, where people might make fifteen thousand dollars a year. Okay, but I, I think the difference is a lot. If you are twenty five years old in Dallas, Texas making $60,000 a year, which is well within the realm of possibility. That goes a hell of a lot farther in Texas than it does in Los Angeles, and you're going to get a better quality. Well, you're telling me gold diggers are digging less gold in Texas? Uh, believe me. Well, believe me. Uh, let me tell you something, Thomas. The ones who want more money than that come to Los Angeles. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm or they go to Miami. Uh, don't know anything about Miami, actually. Can't no, speak. I was just there. Uh, well, I, I can't speak to it because I've never... Yeah, well, trust me when I tell you, Miami is uh, uh, also full of hot chicks. But but I, I think I, the difference is for somebody making the same amount of money, um, Texas is a much better option than Los Angeles just because it costs so much less to be there. That's All right, well, that's your opinion. Um, what about whether men are shallower than women? Uh, well, I, I think men are equally shallow as women wherever you go. Right, but we're not more okay. shallow. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, hang on a second, Thomas. Chris, what do you want to say to Thomas? Hey, Tom. I just wanted to say, in Texas, there aren't a lot of gold diggers. I grew up in northwest Houston, and right above me, I was from Spring, and it's a place called the Woodlands. It's I, absolutely. It's like no, you're with it well. All right. Now you got Austin. Austin is a lot of com computer companies. Same thing. There's a lot of gold diggers, man. Dallas, Fort Worth. A lot of stuck up people. I mean, it's like a second Silicon Valley, dude. Seriously. All these computer companies, all these hot women, they go to it. 
They want to deal with somebody that has the money. There's the three places that have the money. Come on, dude. you got to agree with me. The only, I said, that's absolutely true. The only thing is, I think, as compared to the West Coast, it, that amount of money is significantly less than you'll find in Texas. That is true. I actually live in Orange County, California, right now. I moved here two years ago, to be honest with you. I got away from the woodlands because there is stuck-up people. Guess what? I moved to Orange County. There's more stuck-up people. But, I mean, there's gold diggers everywhere you go. Houston and Dallas and Austin are the three major cities of, the, of Texas, of course. There are so many damn gold diggers there. It's uh, unbelievable. Well, right. the only thing I think, the only my only point is that I think you can have a smaller purse relative to what you get in California and get a better girl who even is a gold digger. That's my only point. The Just only difference the cost of living is so much lower in Texas. That's the only thing, dude. I mean, that's the housing. But you can still, I mean, there's a hell of houses, excuse my language, you can still find big houses there with worth money, but, I mean, you're lower income there as well. You're not making as much as you are here in Southern California. Uh, well, I, I think that depends on the industry. Um, if you're in energy, you're going to be making more in Texas than you will uh, out in the West Coast. But I think as a general rule, dollar for dollar, you're going to get, uh, you've got more earning power in Texas than you do in California. And that's my point. You're going to be able to get a better girl. So you're recommending if guys want to find a gold digger who's really hot, they can get one for less gold in Dallas than they can in Los Angeles. Not true. I, I, I think that's absolutely true, Tom. That's, that's my only point. Chris doesn't agree. No. Like I said, the cost of income is the same amount as to you would in Orange County. The only difference is you make more because it costs more out here. I mean... If every place costs the same amount, you would have the same amount of gold diggers everywhere else, they, and that's what you have. They make, I mean, an average person makes, what is it, Tom, $40,000 a year? Yeah, 40, 42, something like that. Okay, out here it's about 60, correct, I mean, if I'm correct. I mean, if a guy makes $120,000 in Houston, he's going to make about one hundred and sixty to $175,000 out here. Um, same thing I with real estate. I own a house right now that's a hundred thousand dollars in Texas. That's an acre of land, about twenty five hundred square foot. Out here, that would cost about eight hundred thousand dollars. Well, I, I, I'm not sure that's actually the case. I think um, you're going to get paid depending on the industry. I, I, I'm an energy. I worked in the energy industry, so that's what I know best. And regardless of where you are, you're going to make the most in Texas. And therefore, if you've got equal jobs. How you're going to take it in Texas versus California? Just because that's that's where that's where the money is. All right. On that note, Chris Thomas, I thank you for the call. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I went and did this uh, Dick Clark TV show, The Other Half. And uh, they showed a video on the show of these, like all these firemen in uniform. And the woman stood up and said, "Oh, I'd do anything for the firemen, Dick." And then I realized she was talking to Dick Clark. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Are men more shallow than women? No, absolutely not. Chad in Deerfield, Illinois. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Tom, <laughs> been listening here in Chicago a few months. It's a breath of fresh air. You say a lot of things that I'm warning. A lot of my friends who are getting married, you know, I was got divorced after 10 years, was with her a few years before that. And it's the best thing I ever did in 10 years was leave her after finding out she was cheating on me. I have two wonderful kids. It took a lot of balls to uh, get divorced and move out. But I finally feel like I'm getting on with my life. And are you getting, and are you getting more ass than a toilet seat yet? Absolutely. Good. I'm Absolutely. proud. I'm proud to hear that. Now, don't hook up with another one, all right? <laughs> okay. Hump them and dump them. Okay. Bang them and clang them. Hit them and quit them. Hey, you know, I, 
These guys I know getting married, they have no idea what they're getting themselves into. They don't even talk about whether they're going to have kids or not. They just get married. They don't understand the legal ramifications of it. Right. Or the long, that they're clueless. Yeah, well, they don't realize how many hundreds of thousands of dollars that's going to cost them, if not millions in some cases. They have no idea. That's right. I, I, tell them, I try and tell them, and they just look the other way, <laughs> and they, they, they get resentful. Oh, I'll bet they do. But you know why they're resentful? Because you're doing what they don't have the balls to do. Living on your own, doing your own thing, getting more ass than a toilet seat. So glad I did it. The only way married guys get more ass than a toilet seat is because their uh, wives gain 50 pounds. You're getting more ass every year. Oh, she is like Porky the Pig now. <laughs> I, I started looking her eyes for, for weeks. I'm like, what's wrong with you? And she's like, oh, I found this other guy. And he's my soulmate, but I still want to be with you. I said, you can talk to my lawyer, and I moved out. Oh, my God. Well, she probably looks like a Vienna beef sausage right now. She's getting there. You have to put her in a blanket with sesame seeds or uh, poppy seeds. You're all set. You know, we've got two kids together, so I see her about five times a week. And I, you know, I look great. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you, you look great. You're probably better off financially. Oh, yeah. And well, you're getting more ass than a toilet seat. I'll be broke for about two years, you know? Yeah. After that, I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, you don't even mind. All these guys who call in and talk about divorce, they're all getting raped, just like you. And you heard what I said before, Chad. You know why divorce costs so much? <laughs> because it's worth it. Because it's worth it. That's right. It is worth it. And by the way, uh, how's her sex life? Uh, <laughs> the guy that she wants to be with lives 60 miles away. I'll bet he does. What does he do the other six nights of the week? Yeah, exactly. And he, he's, uh, he's about eight years older than her, big Irish guy who's never been married. Does he, he probably lives with his mom the rest of the week. Oh, total mama's boy. I knew it. Total mama's boy. All his brothers and sisters are married but him. And he talks about his mom all the time was in the hospital. How did I know? <laughs> You're smart. Come on. You are, you are a breath of fresh air in the evenings in Chicago radio. I love that. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, thank you for that, Chad. I'm so proud of you. I really am. I think this is great. I'm very proud of myself. It took a lot of guts. To, to move out of a home with your kids is the scariest experience of my life. I'm sure it was, but uh, nothing com nothing worth having comes easy. And now that you've done it, look how great you're doing. And my kids are doing great. They're doing incredible. Because I stay in their life. I, I'm pretty honest with them. And, you know, but the main reason I wanted to call, two reasons, thank you for being on the air, and to tell other guys who are getting pressure to get married to talk to a lawyer first before you get married. Understand the long-term legal ramifications of what you're getting yourself into yeah. and sign a prenuptial if you absolutely have to get married. Most people I know get nervous signing like a 42-month car lease. <laughs> yeah. And they don't realize what they're signing when they're signing a marital agreement. They have no idea. <laughs> My friend just got married. I said... She, she, he's a, he's a, you know, grew up here in Chicago, Italian guy, married a Mexican girl, has been in the States for three years. I said, well, how many kids are you guys going to have? He goes, oh, we never talked about it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And he makes about 40000 a year. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh. It's like, God. <laughs> well, Chad, you keep hammering away because those guys, as they see how well you're living... They're going to know you were right. Warn <laughs> warn Nobody listens. They won't listen. Have they seen some of the smoking hot chicks you've been on with? A few. Yeah, that, you know? <laughs> that's what's really going to get them, you know, when they see some of those smoking hot babes. <laughs> and there they are with the woman. She'll be busy cutting her hair off and, uh, and uh, chunking up. She'll be heading off to the Cinnabon every day. And, uh, you know, that deal. I thought I knew what I was doing. I had no idea. Yeah. None. Well, everybody pretty much has been there, including me. And uh, we all learn the hard way. And uh, I'm trying to help the guys now not learn the hard way. That's what we're trying to do here. That's what you're trying to do with your pals. 
Yeah, you know, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I know you do. I've been married for 10 years. I know you do. I I see what happens. Oh, boy, Chad, I I completely understand. Congratulations, good work, proud of you. Thanks for listening to us tonight in Chicago. Fantastic. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Rachel on the Tom Likas Show. How you doing, Tom? Great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I'm glad that I finally got a hold of you. I've been on hold for quite some time. I've wanted to call her. I've actually tried calling quite a few times and could never get through. And you and your listeners need to hear that there are people out here like well, me. I'll tell you what, Rachel. If you want to call, I don't know, Star 98.7, you'll get right through. There's no busy signals over there. Yeah, I have. You call no in. They'll put you right up. Yep. No, plenty of station. By the way, plenty of shows in L.A. you could call. You'll get right through. You know, honestly, Tom, your opinions interest me the most. Well, that's why you can't get through on this show, and you can get through on all the others. I would have to agree with you on that one. That's right. And I have to say that I agree with a lot of things that you say, but my main problem is that although I agree with a lot of the things that you say, there is absolutely the exception to the rule, and those women never call in. You never hear from those women. I'm 5'8", I'm 110 pounds, I'm 22 years old, I have waist-length red hair, I all through high school had huge breasts, I'm not so big anymore, but I got enough to get the job done. What what uh, happened to your breasts? Where'd you you put them? I don't know, trust me, it depresses me. Um, I got the flu really bad, and I went down to like 83 pounds. You got the flu and you lost your breasts? Mm -hmm, I did, well I went down to 83 pounds, I had 104 temperature for two weeks, and I never got my breasts back. I was like really, really skinny. Bizarre. I know, trust me, I've seen so many doctors about it, because I was a little bit pissed. I was like, had double D's in high school and was 107 pounds and 5'8". Never got them back, and anybody who knows me right now... (laughs) <laughs> and you were looking forward to the future where guys were going to buy you things and take you places and do things for you? Mm, not really. With their face buried in those double Ds, and now now it's not happening. But that's the thing, though, is I want to do it all for myself, and that's why I'm calling is because you, uh, your listeners need to know that there are women out there that exist like me. I'm 22 years old. I don't want to have kids until I'm at least 30. Good. If I get pregnant... I will absolutely have an abortion. I've talked to my boyfriend that I'm with now about getting a chip or even signing a legal agreement saying that if I get pregnant, I'll have an abortion. Well, those are not enforceable anyway. No point wasting your money with a lawyer getting one of those. Well, it's just more of a show of a good faith. And to be completely honest, the past couple of relationships that I've been in, every person that I have dated for since I was about 17 has proposed to me and tried to get me to start having kids with them oh, and i've been avoiding it and staying away from it for as long as i can remember i don't want kids until i'm in my 30s i don't plan on having them anytime soon and uh like i said i, I drive a beamer i make really good money i'm not a stripper <laughs> i make money legit and i have never in my life dated a man who has had more than $1,000 in his bank account. And I don't look for men that have a lot of money. I look for men that are ambitious and successful and want to do things with their life, but it's not about the money. Sounds good to me. So uh, when can I nail you? <laughs> yeah, well, I know you're going to get angry at me for this, but I actually have one of those boyfriends. But um, oh. if anything, he's... I, I, I no, don't worry. That won't last. You're only 22. That won't last. We'll see. You know how it is, L.A., I, every, you know, you ever get those calls from the ex, any ex, every six months? Hey, yeah. how's it going? You know, boyfriend, how's it going? They wait until, until that one falls out, until he falls out of bed. <laughs> and in L.A., eventually, everybody does fall out of bed. You know, like I, I consider everybody who tells me they're getting married and say, oh, that's great. Uh, talk to you in six months. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the way it is. So, well, the uh, guy that I'm with now actually waited about seven years before we dated. I was friends with him. What was he waiting for? He was waiting for you to hit legal age, probably. No, no, oh. no. We we definitely had some fun beforehand, but um, I never dated him before because I knew he wasn't going to have a monogamous relationship, and I wasn't going to pursue that. And we were both young and still learning things and experiencing things, and we had our own paths to take, and we stayed in touch and. Now we're on the same path. We moved out to Los Angeles together because this is where both of our careers are. This is where we want to be, and we both are independent and supportive of each other's independence and careers. And it's Well, good luck on that. The 
Tom Likas Show.